Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow, and today we're talking details you might not know. I've been running a little series recently about interesting details to be found in the game. We've looked at unique animations from certain monsters, clever tricks to avoid attacks, uh, and whether it's a big detail or a small and weird one. That's the idea of the series, anything goes. With title update one, we've had a lot of new mechanics and things just added to the game. Lots of new details to consider. So I put together a video of 10 things you didn't know for the update specifically. Hopefully some of these can be helpful to you guys, so let's get started. We begin with some monster specific ones. Firstly, for our new friend here, Lucent Nagakuga. The main gimmick here is Lucent's impressive ability to go invisible. Those who pay close attention can still track the monster though, thanks to sound, the shimmering or the cloud effect, or if Nagakuga's enraged, you can see the glowing eyes. However, there's a simple and really effective trick to never lose sight of this sneaky fellow. Literally, focus target the monster. The default bind should be press right stick in your controller if you've got the setting turned on, and that'll focus one of the three monsters in the hunt. You can press it to change monster. That's even easier, of course, when there's only one target to focus, so we can just toggle this on and off whenever we need to, whenever Lucent moves around or goes invisible. As you can see, this is an incredibly effective effective way to keep track of a very bouncy and quick monster, especially when it can go invisible. To turn this feature on though, you'll need to go to your settings. So go to the menu here and go to options. Then at the bottom, we have the camera style. So you want to go from target camera to focus camera, and then you can mess around with its restrictions to make the process a little bit smoother. From there though, anytime that you lose sight of a monster, you can just quickly press the right stick in and relocate them. Certainly great in this fight. Second up from monsters is actually two in one for both the metal of update one. These metallic monsters, be it Silver Rathlos or Golden Rathion, are apparently more than just a concept of metal. As you begin the fight, you might notice that your hits are kind of dull. We're not getting the satisfying numbers we really would hope to see. This appears to be because of a sort of metallic layer that isn't really an issue when they're heated up with that blue fire, but certainly an issue when they're not. So something that's not reflected in the Hunter Notes at all is the bonus damage you can do when you sort of strip away that metal armor. Specifically with their heads, if you expose the flesh underneath, you can deal extra damage. And it's a significant increase as you can see. So while I'd say most of us are focusing heads of monsters in many fights, it is interesting to know that there's technically a layer under there that you need to break through by breaking the part. And once you're through, the head damage is going to skyrocket. Next up then, let's talk about two of the new skills found in update one. First up, the new armor skill found on the Lucent set. This is Sneak Attack, increasing the damage to monsters when attacking them from behind. As you can see on the right, uh, level one increases by 5%, then 10% at two, and then a measly two extra percent at 12 percent of level three kind of weird that level three is so significantly worse of an increase than one to two as it turns out this is actually an error in the text it is actually a 20 percent increase at level three which really does make sense because you should get more power in a skill the more you commit to it so it's even better than it actually says there in the text as a skill this is not a bad one for multiplayer right where you can much more consistently attack the back of a monster and the skill is even more worth running than you may have thought due to this weird issue with the text and the number it actually tells you. The other skill that I want to talk to you about is the new skill on the Silver Raffalo set, that is Element Exploit. Increasing your element damage by some seriously big percents, 10, 12 and a half, 15 percent, when attacking a quote weak spot. This is an incredible skill if you understand how it works and can make the most of it. If we go to the Hunter Notes and go to Large Monsters, you can see the long list of different monsters we can look at and then we can go to their physiology. This shows that their weaknesses, those hit zones that we're just talking about. So those are the hit zones of the monster. And each hit zone, as you can see, has a different weakness level assigned by a number. Depending on the actual monster, you can see that they all have different weaknesses, different hit zones, some monsters being specifically weak to certain things, whereas some aren't weak to anything. So the new skill, Element Exploit, that only triggers when we're attacking a hit zone with a weakness of 20 or higher to that element. So in the case of Tetranodon here in fire, it would trigger if we were attacking the head, but no other part with fire damage. Thankfully, 20 plus is a really reasonable number to have. As you can see with Thunder, we have 20 on the neck and torso, we have 25 on the foreleg, and even 30 on the head. This is not the case for Element Exploit as a Rampage decoration though, compared to the armor skill. The Ellen Bane Jewel here only actually works and triggers when the monster has 25 or higher as an element hit zone weakness. That's a lot harder to get going, even though it's only five levels higher. The thing is, if you can get both of these triggers, 
triggering element exploit and element bane throughout a fight consistently this is a massive damage increase for an element build which is great for dual blades let me tell you it's just something to be aware of and make the most use of now let's talk about the new end game aspects of the update such as the anomaly investigations or the new research lab here that bahari is running the first thing i want to highlight is something we didn't originally realize until we spoke to each other me and josh about the mantles here the rewards for the coins this is not actually a set list that bahari just sells this is surprisingly unique specifically to you you see this list of mantles that i can buy well these are all of the mantles i've actually already seen in game so they've dropped for me least once so now they're showing up in this list of trading options if you had never seen a rathalos mantle before you wouldn't be able to buy it here so while being able to buy these specific things and make our life a lot easier with less rng you still have to go through the original rng and get the mantle originally before you can start buying them with coins so really important to know that on another note there's also the research requests here that a lot of people have been having a bit of issue with and it's understandable because at first glance you might think this mechanic like i did would encourage online play with your friends to achieve these requests right encouraging people to work together it actually weirdly goes against that concept so you can see my request here for a kulu right it needs to be level 81 or higher and i've only got one left before it's gone the odds of someone i like to play with actually having the exact same request at the same level is very unlikely maybe i don't currently have a level 81 or higher kulu yiku uh, hunt or investigation rather it's kind of a specific one because it's such a high level request what i could do is i could play with a friend who does have that quest and then they can post it and then we can run it together right encouraging us to play together problem is that friend is very very unlikely to actually have a kulu and probably has a different monster if we were to do the monster he wants to do well then i couldn't do kulu and then it would be gone after one more quest you really want to be working on on these requests even just for the point bonus i think this is a real shame and something i hope they could fix maybe adding say a sync up the request you're working on feature it does feel like a bit of an oversight by the devs something that's kind of forcing friends to not play together. So I have a couple of tips to help you complete these requests, but unfortunately it's not going to be with your friends specifically. First up, to find the thing you need on your request, you could just go to the online quest board if you play online and respond to join request. Then we can literally pick an anomaly investigation of the target we need. So I need a Kulu Yuku and I also need it to be 81 or higher. So I can set those parameters and search for that. I'll be put into an online lobby with some people I don't know who are currently on that hunt and then I can get that hunt done. After that, I'll come back to a list of new requests as well as the monster we just hunted. So from there, I'd be able to solo a Kulu at 81 or higher because I've been given that investigation now. Or I could just keep doing online and targeting the monsters for the request. Alternatively, we could head into any investigation, whatever, something that's hopefully high level and suitable for whatever the request we're looking for is, and then just go pick up all of the different afflicted materials on the ground, whether it's ore, uh, herbs, plants, mushrooms, whatever. And each time I do that, there's a chance I'll get a new investigation pop up on the side. What we can do is just go into one of these, go pick up all the afflicted materials, and then return from the quest to progress time and keep the rewards, or finish the hunt. From there, I'll have a new list of possible investigations, and hopefully one of them is the monster that I need of the correct level. So that's a way to do it offline without doing online play, but it's certainly less effective. As another tip on this topic though, if you are playing online with others and another player reaches an afflicted material on the ground before you and picks it up, well, don't worry, you'll still get credit. Even though it's going to be consumed so only one person can actually pick it up, everyone will still get the research points and possibly a new investigation, much the same as if you'd gone and picked it up yourself. So you don't have to race around competing to pick them up before each other, so that's nice. Another detail about the request you might not have realized is as you can see, my reward right now is 100 investigation coins, even though you might currently have one for just 50. That's because after you complete your first request, it goes up to 100 from then on. So technically, as you do the 10 requests required, you're going to get roughly 110 to 120 coins per request card completion, which is not bad at all. The most expensive mantles are 300, so you'd only need to do that roughly two times or a little bit more than that to reach a 300 coin cost. Last up then, a funny but fair one to me, to do with the Ibushi armor set and the Nawa armor set. These two are completely excluded from curious crafting in a weird way. So while I can curious craft the armor, as you can see, I've got a better slot there. Let's re-roll again. And again, I got a better slot. This time I got better armor resistances, better defense. 
at no point am I ever seeing an actual skill when I'm trying to augment either the Ibushi or the Nawa armor sets. And that is for a very specific reason. Like I said, they've been excluded from this feature. So while technically you can augment them, you're never going to see a skill. The reason for that is due to the main mechanic of this set. When you're wearing four pieces of Ibushi or Nawa or mixing them both, you can see that you actually get a double effect. So I have no focus in this uh, set that I'm wearing right now, but I have two focus and also two constitution, two guard, two stamina surge, two guard up, two slugger and so on. I don't have any of these in decorations. They're just on the armor set. But for some reason, I've got an extra level, right? That's the effect of this set. When you're wearing four pieces of Ibushi and or Nawa, it gives you a double level on all the skills currently equipped. It's a pretty neat feature, but sadly it just doesn't make this set relevant in the meta. Like as cool as it is, I might need constitution, but if I do, I probably don't need guard. You've got so many skills here and this cool effect where it levels them up when you're wearing a four piece, but there's this jumble of skills that aren't relevant to any proper set. If you could then put on a skill using Curious Crafting and then it double levels it, that could be pretty ridiculous. That could be insane, in fact. Maybe a bit broken, especially with the RNG involved in that concept alone. Maybe you could craft yourself an outrageously effective set with a wall of skills all double leveled. And if that was meta, in fact, the best thing you could do, it would be really RNG based, wouldn't it? So it's probably a good thing that they've excluded them, but an unexpected little detail. But there you have it. 10 details to know in update 1, some of which I hope were not just interesting but helpful to you too. If you have any extra tips for the update that most people might not know, then do drop it in the comments, you might help someone. And if you've enjoyed the video, drop a like. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.